Hello everyone and welcome back to Humble Heart Horsemanship. My name is Sabrina and I'm so used to saying, and these are my horses, but I'm actually in Wyoming right now. I am sitting on this bed in this Airbnb. I have a cup of coffee over here and I'm about to share with you the story of how I got Gunner. For those of you who don't know who Gunner is, Gunner is my soon-to-be 19-year-old paint horse gelding. I've owned him for almost three years. He's the second horse I've ever owned, and he was a rescue horse that I got when I was a freshman in college. I always enjoy hearing other people's stories of how they got their horses, and I really am excited to share this story with you. The story of how I got Gunner begins way back in 2016 when I was 18 and a freshman in college. At the time, I owned a Mustang mare named April, and she had a bolting problem that was not disclosed to me until after I had purchased her and I boarded at the same barn with my friend we're gonna call her Angela for the purpose of this video Angela at the time owned an off-the-track thoroughbred we were really great barn buddies we spent a lot of time together at the barn riding talking hanging out with our horses and the story begins when her and I were just walking through the barn looking at all the different horses in the stalls and just making small talk I remember I walked by this really dark box stall on the corner and seeing the sorrel horse in there. He had a white blaze down his face and his eyes were just so soft and so sweet and so in need of attention and love and care. He had his head up by the bars of the stall and he was kind of sniffing us while we were standing outside of his stall. I remember saying how cute he was and when I looked back at his body, I noticed that he was extremely skinny and that he looked like he was ill. He was also standing in about a foot of his own feces and he did just not look right at all. I instantly felt so sad for him because I could just sense by looking into his eyes that he was had such a sweet personality and that he just wanted to be loved. I was really alarmed by the state of this horse and I was confused and wondering, you know, who owns this horse? Why is he in this situation? And I was just feeling upset by seeing a horse in that kind of condition in the barn. A few days later, my friend ended up talking to the barn owner and owners of this barn were an elderly couple who meant well, but they weren't that educated on keeping horses on a property. But my friend Angela ended up talking to the barn owner. She had said that this guy had dropped Gunner off in the stall, basically said he wanted to board him there, but he didn't sign a contract. And um, in the feeding totes that he left for the horse to be fed, he had only put a few handfuls of hay and a few horse treats in each one. And if you know anything about horses, you would know that horses need way more than just a few handfuls of hay to suffice for a meal. The barn owner also said that he hadn't cleaned the horse's stall and she noticed that the poop was piling up. Long story short, the barn owners basically took ownership of this horse because the guy pretty much abandoned him there. The only information they got about this horse, whose name was Gunner, was that he was an ex-barrel racing horse and that he had developed ring bone in his front legs and the guy feeling like he couldn't use him basically just left him there. My friend Angela decided to purchase Gunner from the barn owners and she wanted to rehab him and get him into a better situation and provide a better life for him. Keep in mind she didn't know anything about this horse except for a few tiny details. So I was there helping her for the first ride, the first test ride that she put on Gunner. The barn owner said that he hadn't been ridden for a couple of years and when she got on him he was a perfect saint. She walked him around the arena, she did a little bit of some trotting, and he really was very safe and very kind-hearted horse. I was also there for the first trail ride. I helped lead him around the property and my initial opinion about Gunnar was that he was a very kind-hearted horse who had been mistreated and that he deserved better. Now my friend would know a lot about caring for a horse, but she did try her best to do whatever she could to get Gunner back into a healthy body condition score and he was definitely looking better after a few months under her care. After a few months of Gunner being under her care, I had just rehomed my mare April. I had many accidents on April, but the worst one and the last one that I had on her, I ended up fracturing my tailbone. I had to go to physical therapy. I couldn't ride for however many months. I couldn't even sit longer than like five to 10 minutes in the car or just 
sitting on a chair or a couch without having to get up and stretch. And I was also in college. I told myself that I was going to wait at least one to two years until I would purchase my next horse because I was gonna focus solely on college. But the universe had other things in mind for me and I'm really glad that it did. Also was in the process of moving from Portland, Oregon to Central Oregon, which was a really big move for me. And I was ready to start a new life in a new area. So with my tailbone injury, moving and being in college, I really wasn't even focusing on horses at that time and my whole accident or accidents I should say with April caused me to lose a lot of my confidence as a rider and as a horsewoman and I had a fear somewhat of riding horses which I had never experienced in my life. So it was a very hard time for me emotionally, mentally, and physically. Angela ended up getting into a very confusing and a very stressful situation. She was going from job to job, relying on her boyfriend to help pay for her horse's care. She wasn't taking care of her horses as they should have been taken care of. One of her horses ended up having to be put down and Gunner was also coming up lame every time that she rode him because she wanted to ride her horse in a more athletic way and with Gunner's ring bone, his body wasn't having it. Her journey with Gunner kind of was like this. She loved Gunner's personality, but she was busy. She was going through some hard times, going between jobs and having issues with her relationships and Gunner was not getting the care that he deserved or needed. And meanwhile, I had just moved out to Central Oregon. I was doing my own thing, but I was still communicating with Angela via Facebook Messenger. And I remember one day she told me, I'm going to have to sell Gunner. I said, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like you were just starting to progress with him. You were just starting to get to know him and have this bond. And you know, she explained her situation and said, I'm gonna put a sale ad up and I had made a comment and I said, oh man, I would really love to purchase Gunner. And I said, if I was in the situation right now and if I had horse property, which is then my goal, uh, I would definitely buy him from you. He's so sweet. I'm sorry to hear that. And she had said, oh my gosh, she would be the perfect home for Gunner. I would just feel so happy if he went to you. And I told her that I wasn't in that situation to get a horse right now. She had said, you know, I'll kind of keep Gunner as best as I can for you. Uh, you should totally have them. And she was kind of joking about it. I thought she was joking. And I was kind of joking, being like, oh yeah, you know, we'll, I'll pick him up tomorrow and all that kind of stuff. But what ended up happening is on Christmas Eve, I was back in Portland to visit my sister and her boyfriend and she had said, hey, I can pick you up in my car, we'll go out to the barn, we'll get some coffee, celebrate her birthday, which was Christmas Eve, and we can go out and see Gunner and you can brush him and ride him if you want. And I said, sure, that sounds fun. So she ended up driving out to my sister and my boyfriend's house and picking me up on Christmas Eve and we drove out to the barn. I brought Gunner in from the field. He was just such a lover, so cuddly, let me halter him, bring him into the barn and he was all scruffy because, you know, it was end of December, very cold out. And I brushed him and I saddled him up and I brought him into the arena and she let me ride him for a little bit. I just felt so safe on him. When I look back on it, I can almost get a little emotional because I had um, such, a, a, such a traumatic journey with April that riding Gunner made me feel so safe and so secure and I felt in myself that he would never take a wrong step on purpose and I felt so wholesome riding him and it helped my confidence. After that I knew that this horse was meant to be and on that Christmas Eve night when I rode him for the first time I decided that I was going to start leasing him from my friend. Even though I didn't have a horse property or a horse boarding barn set up yet for him to go to or anything like that I was like this is my horse, I'm getting this horse. I said I wasn't gonna get a horse for one to two years. It's only been like six months, but apparently this is happening and I went with it. So how this lease was going to work was that it was going to be a care lease where I would pay for Gunner's feed, his hay and his grain, and I would also pay for his board. And basically she was going to take care of him in terms of anything else that needed to be done because I was living in Central Oregon and I 
physically couldn't be there to do those things. In the meantime, I went back to Central Oregon and I spent a lot of time looking for horse boarding facilities. I finally found a place. This was the place I was going to bring him home to and where I was gonna board him at, which I was so excited for. And then I was able to pick a date on when I was going to bring him home. And I ended up bringing him home on April 15th, which is Gunnar's birthday. I felt that that was really special and I loved having our anniversary of when I purchased him and when I brought him home being on his birthday too. Between Christmas Eve and April 15th when I ended up picking Gunnar up and bringing him home, a lot went down in terms of Gunnar's care by Angela. She had started to lie to me about how much money she was paying on Gunnar's feed, how much care she was actually providing for Gunnar. During that time, Gunnar lost weight, his hooves were overgrown, he developed laminitis on the level 4 scale, he was lame, he wasn't moving right. So when I picked him up on April 15th to go trailer him back home, it was so disheartening for me to see because when I looked into his eyes, I just felt so sad that such an amazing, such a loving horse had been neglected once again. And I also found it really disheartening that Angela didn't want to be there to see Gunnar go to his new home and she didn't want to even say bye to him. So that was really sad for me, but it helped firm that I was going to be the right person in Gunnar's life to be his owner and to be his partner. So I took Gunnar on as a rescue and when he got to the horse boarding facility, I made a vet appointment for him to get his teeth floated, chiropractic, vaccines, and then I also made an appointment for him to get his hooves done. And I looked at Gunnar and I thought to myself, you know what, this is the universe putting this horse in your path for you to heal, to bring him into your life, into your family as a rescue. I knew that when you rescue animals, a big part of yourself heals as well as the animal. And little did I know how much of a difference this horse would make in my life and how much he would teach me. So within the first week of owning him, we got all those things done. Gunner also had level four laminitis and the vet ended up prescribing these easy cloud therapeutic boots that made a huge difference in his ability to move around comfortably. The vet prescribed me to put the easy cloud boots on and put him out in the dry lot and just give him time off and let him heal and he was moving so much better, he wasn't lame, he was moving great, and then she told me I could start riding him. So I spent a lot of time working on groundwork and then I had my first ride on him. I was so nervous because he had had so much time off. I mean, from Christmas Eve to April, he had time off. No one had ridden him, no one had really done any groundwork with him, he was just sitting. So when I got on him after a long time, like multiple days of doing groundwork with him, I was just about to cry because I got on him and I felt like all of that hard work of helping to rehab him led to this moment now. During our first ride together with me being his owner, we walked, we trotted, we did a little bit of some cantering and I was blown away by Gunner. He was so well trained, he was responsive, he was gentle, he was kind, he was forgiving, and I felt like I had hit the jackpot. Also managed his ring bone the best that I could by giving him joint supplements and proceeding with light daily exercise. And I actually got about two years of a consistent riding out of Gunner with very little lameness from him. And we did so much together. We did trail rides, I rode him in the outdoor arena, we used to ride out in the roads together. I even did some small jumps with him. Gunner was the first horse that I ever jumped on, the first horse that I ever did a flying lead change on, the first horse I ever rode on a road, the first horse that I ever took on a solo trail ride with, and I really owe a lot to Gunner because he has helped make me into the horsewoman that I am now, and he's taught me a lot about patience, consistency, bravery. For those of you who don't know, the condition that Gunner has ring bone is a degenerative condition. It's osteoarthritis. There's really no cure for it. It can definitely be managed, but there's not one cure-all that would make him sound, completely sound, or able to maintain a long-standing career. A little over a year ago, I decided that I was going to pretty much retire Gunner. Uh, because every time that I would trot him or do a little bit of some canter work, he would come up lame and he was stiff. And 
I could just tell looking into his eyes that he was telling me that he was done and that he wanted to be retired. I tried to be so in tune with my animals and be honest with myself and be real realistic when an animal is giving me the signs that they are ready to be retired or they are ready to be done. And he was telling me that. So although it was so hard for me and very emotional, I felt so blessed to have been given two years to ride and work with this horse. Now Gunner is basically retired. Um, I like to sometimes call it like his semi-retirement because I still pull him out and we just kind of plot around the arena and work on some fun pop patterns at a walk. But, you know, sometimes I'll take him on light little trail rides around the property because he really enjoys getting out and getting attention, but I decided to retire him and that was one of the main reasons why I decided to purchase Gemini, who's my little three-year-old gelding. And there's so much more to Gunner's story than just this. As we all know, not one horse is the same. They all have their own stories and I just thought it would be fun for me to share with you guys Gunner's story because he's such a big part of my horsemanship journey and he's taught me so much and so I wanted to not only honor Gunner in this video but I also wanted you guys to get to know him a little bit better. I love to hear the story of how people got their horses and their horses story so if you guys want to leave me a comment in the comment box below the story of your horse I would really enjoy reading it and make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this and I will see you in the next video. Bye!